There's so much going on at Briggs right now. Are these high-ranking military officials? So what's the story with these guys? They showed up under the pretext of escorting Ms. Rockbell. But right. I'm not buying that. Right. They only answered at Kinley. Yeah. He's got some kind of plan for us here. They got big plans for you what? here. It involves a giant circle. Episode 37, the first homunculus. You should have told me you were heading to the north. I didn't have a chance. We were in a hurry, okay? Yeah, and when are you guys ever not in a hurry? Anyway, what did you do to get locked up? It's only a misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. Just a lack of communication. <laughs> I'll have him released within no time at all. <sighs> Thanks a lot. She likes Kimberly. Kimberly. He's so Based charming. We're lucky to have you watching out for them. It's nothing. Part of what makes him so dangerous. He's so, like, normal, otherwise. I wouldn't trust Kimberly if I were you. What? Why not? He seems nice. <laughs> well, if you only knew. I mean, I'm sure he is nice to Winry. That's the is weird it thing. Is true that your parents lost their lives while giving medical attention during the war? That's right. Thought so. I was part of the squadron that recovered their bodies. What? We had been dispatched to help them, but it was too late by the time we got there. I'm sorry. Thank you for trying. Just dialing that charm up to 11. Man, I like Kimberly more and more. He's so interesting. I'm so relieved what they did with him. 100% when I first saw him. I'm like, he's just evil. Like an evil dude. And he is that, but he's so much more. He's like, smart. He's super smart and charming. In every way, he's normal. Except that he's crazy. <laughs> if that makes sense. And what's even weirder about it is that it might actually be genuine on some level. Like he might actually be someone who is conscientious in certain ways and a mass killer in other ways. That's one thing the show does such a good job of. Like I feel the same kind of conflict about Bradley, right? It's like how much is he hiding his rage and wrath fueled nature? And how much of him is like just a good father and a leader who wants the best? For well, no, he's not that at all. But you know what I mean. So interesting. They stayed true to their duty and they helped the needy right up to the end. I respect their bravery. I wish that I could have had the chance to meet them. See, he might be telling the truth. Or he might not be. He doesn't seem like a liar. The thought of you kept them strong during the worst of the war. <laughs> oh no, poor Winry. <laughs> Your parents were true heroes. And it's an honor to meet you. All that's kind of true. Do you have any idea what that psychopath did in Ishva? Right. But now Ed's gonna seem crazy by pushing her away from him. Got Lieutenant Hawkeye's experiences to go by, and she thinks she thinks I. Speaking of Winry, you're in love with her. <laughs> you are. Admit it. Just admit it. That's some intense love right there. The love that makes you bounce up to the ceiling. Try to think about something else. That never works. That is such an ad thing to think about, too. Why did I have to fall in love with such a weirdo? Huh? Oh, you just did said that out loud. <laughs> no, Ed, I didn't say anything. Yeah! What the hell, Winry? Hmm. All right, what are you doing out of your cell? He's a Drachman spy. Winry also is a Drachman spy. Are you upgrading, too? <laughs> There's nothing left for me to upgrade, too. <laughs> okay. Damn, that has some competition. Edward, you want me to upgrade you to one of these? My style. Who's the girl? She's too cute to be hanging around you. Ooh. Damn, Winry's a hot item these days. And Briggs. <laughs> <laughs> totally unnecessary, but okay. Far. Cause life isn't fair. <laughs> messed up you want to come check out my work shit yes she does it's not safe here kimberly calmly sips his coffee when we can take care of herself though your little upgrades all taken care of and out of the way so why don't we find a place to sit down i'm eager to discuss our business dialing the charm down to one now he's just upping the creep factor he's playing it safe by keeping us separated mm. and by dragging winry up here right. he just wants to remind us they've got some collateral I never realized just how nervous we make them. Yeah, they respect you guys. An entire week in total darkness. Briggs men don't get scared of the dark. <laughs> All right, General, fair enough. There's no telling what could happen to us while we're down here. If we're not back within 24 hours, seal up this hole with concrete. That's some real dedication. Yeah, that common purpose that they share. I am the only one responsible for the incident involving General Raven. You weren't there. 
You didn't see anything, you didn't hear anything. If Raven's fate is discovered, I order you to solely place the blame on me. We didn't see anything. Who's Raven? Never heard of him. Yeah, we still haven't really found out what is that giant thing. The spiky thing. With the eyes. Let's go. You can probably walk all the way to East City. I'm honored that she would choose me as her partner in arms. Oh no. Madame Olivier needs the strength of your army, not you. She said you might as well just get lost. Uh-huh. This is a very detailed message for the flower lady. Well then, that'll be 35,000 cents, please. <laughs> Damn. I appreciate it. Hey, wait. Who are you? Oh, just someone who served the Armstrong family for generations. Oh, she's an Armstrong. She's got the twinkle, the orange twinkle. Everyone in the Armstrong family is cool. But what do I do? What a These freak. flowers. Oh, no, he's at I don't know. You know a lot of women, so. Thank goodness you're okay. Is there anyone else? What happened? The others were. They were all ripped apart. Listen, we have to get out of here. It's coming back. What is? Please! You gotta get rid of the lights! The shadow! Hey, you're all right now. It's coming! Come on, pull yourself together. What is this thing? It's coming! Can you walk? Let's go. Is it a homunculus? It's not pride, is it? I'm sorry, but my husband isn't home right now. It'd be wonderful if he could look these over by tomorrow. That is urgent. But don't you worry, I'll make sure that he does. Well, thank you, I appreciate it. Salim, shouldn't you be in bed? What the hell was that? Was, but then I heard the door. I thought that it might be father coming home. This is your father's assistant, Lieutenant Hawkeye. It's very nice to meet you, Lieutenant Hawkeye. It's nice to meet you. You must be working hard to be up so late. Not really. I just had to bring your father some documents. But I should be going now. Sorry I woke you. Good night, Salim. He seems like a really sharp kid. Is that a pun? I know it's impolite to brag about my son, but that shouldn't apply since he's adopted. I really shouldn't act so surprised, though. He is related to my husband, so he must have some of his genes. He... Related... He's not related to you? To your oh, husband. doesn't add up. It doesn't. The colonel told me that King Bradley was raised as a test subject. He doesn't have any family. He didn't even know his parents. And I got that strange feeling from Salim. Could he be? So, put it all together. Oh, it's pride. This is pride. But... All thanks to my stepmother. She just doesn't know how to shut up. But you. No. Your presence also gave you away. I recognized it somehow. Salim is pride? What the... What in the world? So, Salim Bradley, what exactly is your true identity? You've got some nerve to ask me a question like that, considering the circumstance. Such bravery. You've also shown good judgment by keeping your gun holstered. Such a move would only get you killed. I'm guessing you're a homunculus, like gluttony. Yeah, how is it in two places at once? I'm offended that you would even put gluttony in me in the same league. Do you ask my name? It's pride. And I was the first to monkey this. Full metal no, alchemist. my little cute Salim, why? Full no. <laughs> Damn, that's dark. That's a terrible picture card. But in a way, I'm relieved because it means he's not innocent and so nothing bad can happen to him. Is he fully aware? Like, has he just been pride this whole time? This has all been an act? Speaking of putting on acts, he is very proud of his daddy. That makes sense. That just flipped the whole script because Bradley's afraid of pride it seems a little bit has Salim been like watching Bradley to keep him in check because they had that conversation where he was warning Bradley about straying too far from father's vision he's just there always watching him I feel so played <laughs> one thing I've noticed even from the very beginning because I thought his name was Salim is that every time they show Salim outside they also flash to the moon just remember lieutenant no matter where you are I will be watching you from the shadows <laughs> yeah it does seem like he can be in a lot of places at once. And it's a few jobs, actually. Three. All from the Fuhrer. First off, he wants you to hunt down Scar. You just find him, I'll take care of the rest. Secondly, he wants you to locate Dr. Marco, who is very likely fled with Scar. Why is Dr. Marco with Scar? The only thing you need to worry about is finding them. And last but not least, he wants you to carve a crest of blood here. A crest of blood? 
Just like what I did in Ishbal. It's very simple. We kill everyone and soak the land with their blood. I would never All right, take this is crossing the line, yeah. But he has a lot of leverage. But that's you just not really happening. the military without being prepared to kill someone. I right. Was determined not to kill. Well, how original of you. Ugh. Can't believe so over it. This has been a big thing for Ed. He's sort of been in the military without really being in it. But here we are. This is sort of the crossroads. Listen, Kimberly, do you have any idea what they're doing? What you're helping them to achieve? They're I'm gonna... curious to see how the world will change. What? Both sides clashing. Will against will. Life versus life. Humans or the homunculi. Which one will triumph? Which side does the world prefer? The homunculi like to see themselves as the next step in the evolution of humanity. But that's for history to decide. I just plan on helping it make up its mind. Have you forgotten that you're a human? How can you take sides with them? Because they've given me complete freedom to use my alchemy however I want. You're insane, Kimberly. My standards do tend to differ from society. Right, he's not exactly However, insane. If I survive this battle, then the world will have chosen my sanity over yours. I stake my being, the very core of my own existence. This is what I'm willing to bet on the outcome of this battle. Kimberly, you don't make any sense. That's surprising. I had always kind of assumed that self centeredness was a universal trait of all alchemists. Well then, let's see if I can find something that you do selfishly crave. <laughs> something you and your brother want more than anything. And if you do what we ask, I'll give it to you. <laughs> A philosopher's stone. Yeah, but we've sort of already been down this route. So Kimberly's view is really interesting. I don't think it's insane, actually. Maybe I'm insane. <laughs> possible i do film videos with a bunch of fruit people so i can't really judge sanity because it's sort of like well i'm not important in the grand scheme of things and nature has its own flow the universe has its own flow things will go where they will go and i accept whatever the outcome is and i'm unattached to my own importance and okay with my death so in some ways it's sort of like a high level of thinking about things it's a very like zoomed out objective way of looking at the world the obvious problem with it is that he's actively taking a role in shaping it and his actions require the death of humans and incredible tragedy and pain and i think in regards to all is one one is all and this is just my reading of it the implication is that through that process human life has value and maybe part of that value lies just in the fact that there's potential there's this question since the very beginning what is the value of a human soul and i think that the show is saying that a human soul is quite valuable because it's all part of this process it's part of this organic process and so destruction seems to run counter to that especially when we factor in like cycles of violence which is a big part of the show and the fact that this kind of thing leads to incredible tragedy when i think another theme of the show is resilience and strength and goodness in the face of tragedy he's way too detached from humanity i mean it's evil in ways that are way more obvious than that but i'm just trying to think about it in the show's terms along the show's themes you know in a way he reminds me of sahir from Korra, not because they have similar goals but because they are like this weird example of dark enlightenment you know what I mean? Like, so here is enlightened and he's free, right? He's totally free of a lot of these restrictions of normal people with, you know, concerns about their own lives and other people. And Kimberly is also free in that way. He's freer than most people. And that's sort of a disturbing thought at first until you realize that there are extreme limits to both of their views and their views are ultimately destructive and probably counter to truth and counter to the universe. I've been ordered by the Fuhrer to fulfill my duties as a human weapon. In other words, they're ordering me to help them commit mass murder. Uh, why don't you just refuse? Because of you, partly. I see. That's why. No. I'm sorry. They're using me to hold you down. I won't cry. I won't. I'm just upset at myself for being so naive. It's not your fault. They actually offered me a Philosopher's Stone as payment. <gasps> A stone, but... That's right, Kimberly has one. We can't, brother! The ingredients for a stone... I know, are... Al. Right, right. Go ahead and do what you want. I will. He's not gonna do it. I think Seven. Al knows that on some level. I'm in, alright? But finding Scar is the first thing I want to do. Oh, yeah? Why is that? Scar is the one who murdered Winry's parents. They deserve vengeance. So he's playing a game now. I see. Fine with me. He's playing a role. Also, I need Al with me. He doesn't have a body, so he's immune to Scar's bodily destruction. 
Well, that is helpful. You're okay with this, Al? The Philosopher's Stone? They can only be made by sacrificing human lives. Brother would never actually use one. <laughs> yeah, he knows. We don't need it. We think we might be able to use Xingyi's Alka history to get our bodies back. Right, this is all just a game. Another chess game. Then I guess I had better hurry up and come up with a believable excuse. Huh? Excuse for? <laughs> the Al in the car gag never gets old. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I like to think that was a knowing look between the brothers. Al protested, like, oh, I'll do what you want. But I like to think that's when the game began. You know, they're on the same page. They know each other well enough. Come on, Al, screw over some. Where's he supposed to go? I'm sorry, Winry, but you need to wait here at the fort. We're not going for a picnic. And neither am I. I just performed a complicated upgrade on his auto mail that I've never done before. What if there's a malfunction? It would tarnish the Rockbell name if I'm not there to fix it. Uh, do you even realize how obsessed with your job you are? You're a The game continues. And proud of it too. Move this those chess pieces. Very well then, generations. you can join yeah, us. Totally. I feel like that's one of Kimberly's weaknesses, that he gets bored of people. He's just too bored for this conversation. Can this Armstrong come too? Really badly for us. Yeah. But still... I can't just sit around waiting anymore. That's the Winry I know and love. <laughs> no more backs in the distance, am I right? Damn, that episode was good. It's so much fun, man. I love Kimberly. He's so interesting. He just keeps surpassing my expectations with every episode. It feels so good to have Winry back. I missed her. Like I mentioned earlier, I feel like this is such a good way to build tension. It's like, it's peaceful, right? Nobody's fighting, but yet they are fighting. They're all playing this crazy game with each other where they're all enemies sort of coexisting in the moment, just each thinking that they'll have the opportunity to gain the upper hand when the time is right. And anything could happen. Like, who knows? Who knows who will prevail? Kimberly has his plans and Ed and Al have their plans and I think mostly their plans are known to each other. It's not like Kimberly trusts Ed and Al right now. He's too sharp for that. His only weakness is that it's too boring to bicker about these things. And then Salim, <laughs> aka Pride, didn't see that one coming. I thought Salim was going to be a sacrifice but no. No, everyone else is the sacrifice. Salim has been in on it the whole time somehow. They give some weird meaning to all those speeches about Bradley, like his paper and stuff like that. Can you just imagine Salim is in school? Like he's in elementary school as Pride. He's just in there with the kids. <laughs> One thing I love about Pride so far is I think the design is perfect, right? Like the, the darkness, the shadow with the huge smile. That's a really great concept. I'm not exactly sure what Pride's power is yet, but it seems to involve something like being everywhere at once. Like anywhere there's a shadow, there's pride. And here I go reading into things too much again. Maybe the fact that it's a shadow is related to the sin itself. Like the shadow of greatness and glory and self-satisfaction is pride, maybe. So yeah, that's the end of this episode. I'll see you guys next time for episode 38.